Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today video, we are going to discuss about SQL database options which we have in uh, Microsoft Azure. So basically, uh, we are today we are only focusing on Azure SQL databases because there are three options which we have in Azure. The first very first one is Azure SQL database. Then we have Azure SQL managed instance. Then last we have SQL Server on Azure VM. So these three are options for database hosting on Microsoft Azure Cloud. So today basically we are focusing on Azure SQL databases with the demo. So let's start. What is Azure SQL database? So Azure SQL database is a fully managed platform as a service database engine that handle most of the database management functions such as upgrading, patching, backups and monitoring without user involvement. So basically it's a platform as a service which is provided by the Microsoft and we do not need to manage any kind of infrastructure. We just have to use the service. Everything is uh, handled by Microsoft Azure itself. So all the patching, backup, upgrades, everything will be done by Microsoft. We have to just use the instance. Azure SQL database is always running on the latest stable version of SQL Server database engine and patched OS with 99.99% .99 availability. So as soon as Microsoft released the new version of SQL Server and uh, it's a stable version basically, then we will get those latest version on the Microsoft Azure. So it's not like, like for currently, for example, it's running SQL Server 2022, which is the latest release which they have. So when we create a database in Microsoft Azure, we will get SQL Server 2022 because it's the latest stable version which we have. With Azure SQL database, you can create a highly available and highly performance data storage layer for the applications and solutions in Azure. SQL database can be the right choice for a variety of modern cloud application because it's enable you to process both relational data and non relational data structures such as graph, JSON and XML etc. So those kind of data basically you can store in a SQL database, Azure SQL database. <laughs> Next come to deployment model. So when we use Azure SQL database in Azure, we got two options. Like we basically created two kind of deployment, two kind of DBs we can create. For the very first, we have single database, then we have elastic pool. So those two options you will get when you create a Azure SQL database. So what is single database? So single database represents a fully managed isolated database. You might use this option if you have modern cloud application and uh, microservices that need a single reliable data source. A single database is similar to a contained database in SQL Server database engine. So for small applications basically which doesn't have any complex things then you can use in that case single database options. Next we have Elastic Pool. So Elastic Pool is a collection of single database with a shared set of resources such as CPU, memory. So single database can be moved into and out of an Elastic Pool. The database in an Elastic Pool are on a single server and share a set number of resources at a set price. So basically Elastic Pool is nothing, it's just a combination of multiple single databases and you will get it on a set number of price resources. So if you want to remove like suppose for example if you have four data single databases part of elastic pool and if you want to move one of the database from elastic pool you can do that. So SQL database is currently 38 data center around the world so you can run your database in a data center near to you. So basically currently we have 30 data centers, SQL database in 30 data center in around the world. So like for me, I'm in India. So I'll choose the nearby like Central India region, Asia Pacific regions I, I will choose because it's a near my location. Next, it comes to purchasing model like cost. So SQL database offer the following purchasing models. The very first we have V core based purchasing model. So vCore pronounces the virtual core represent a logical CPU 
and offer you the option to choose the physical characteristic of the hardware for example the number of cores the number of memories so as per your uh, configuration or specification you will charge for that the v core based purchasing model let you choose the number of v cores the amount of memory and the amount of speed of storage so based on the specification you will choose like number of cpus memory based on that microsoft will charge you so there are n number of uh, configurations which we have we will see when we create uh, when we see uh, when we do the demo next we have dtu based purchasing model so dtu is a database transaction unit it represents a blend measure of cpu blended measure of cpu memory and read write operations like how fast basically you want like performance basically in simple words if i would say so that on the that basis like how like what would be what what type of performance of your application you want based on that you can choose a dto based purchasing purchasing model so dto based purchasing model offer a blended of compute memory and input output resources in three service tier to support light to heavy database workload so basically as per your requirement basically you have to choose out of these two purchasing models and also you have to uh, remain keep in mind about cost things like if you if you very have com very complex uh, uh, application and you want like multiple like simultaneously multiple read and write operation on that db that time like dtu based purchasing model will be uh, good next come to service tier so azure sql database offer three service tier so again the service tier based on the configuration you will charge so the very first we have the general purpose or standard service tier is designed for common workloads it offer budget oriented balanced compute and storage options so it's i would say it's very ch uh, cheap uh, service tier if you are going to use because uh, if you have like common workloads, if you have single microservices, then why you would you go for a business or premium tier or hyper scale service tier? So that purpose, basically general purpose will be sufficient if you don't have that much load on your application. Next, we have the business critical or premium service tier is designed for OLTP application with high transaction rate and low latency requirements. It offers the highest resilience to failure by using several isolated replicas so basically here we will get multiple replicas of our db so in case of any failure or something you will get the replica of that particular uh, database next we have the hyperscale service tier is designed for most business workloads hyperscale provide great flexibility and high performance with independently scalable compute and storage resources so here you will get the option to like uh, increase the number of uh, ram cpu so those things basically you can uh, increase as per your requirement now comes to feature so azure's uh, there are multiple features of uh, azure sql database i have uh, taken three out of that which generally we need it very frequent in our like uh, day, day to day activities so very first is automatic backups so sql database automatically perform full differential and transaction log backups of database to enable you to restore to any point in time so it's automatically basically you don't need to manage anything everything is done by azure itself so as like suppose if your db crash or something that time you can restore back to the uh, previous stage so you have that option for single database and pool database you can configure sql database to store full database backup to azure storage for long term backup retention if you want like long term backup uh, options that time you can use azure storage account to reach to backup these databases next we have point in time restore so all sql database deployment option support recovery to any point in time within the automatic backup retention period of any for any databases so if you see there is a very important within the automatic backup retention period so there will be a defined period 
only that time you can restore back to the previous stage of the database if you cross that attention period then you might not able to restore and this option point in time you will get in all the deployment options like uh, azure sql database azure managed instance and uh, sql server on virtual machine so in all the options we will get this option auto failover groups the auto failover groups feature allow you to manage the replication and failover of some or all the database on a logical server to another region so basically auto failover what it does basically you will separate uh, your db in two regions so if suppose one region is down then you will connect to the another region where you have your dbs so let's see the demo how to create a azure sql database so I am on my Azure portal. So let's create a SQL database, Azure SQL database. I'll go to SQL database, create new one. This source group, I'll choose my existing resource group. Database name, I'll put demo DB. Server, I don't have any servers because this database is going to host on one of the SQL server which we will create and that server is completely managed by Microsoft. We are not going to manage, I mean we can't see that server. So let's create a server first. So I'll create create new. If you see this name here, the last name dot database dot windows dot net. So this is Microsoft thing. So I'll put name here demo and this name should be unique region i'll choose my region south india sorry central india so okay now authentication method i don't have any ad's so i'll use sql authentication so i'll put here name demo and i'll provide password Now here we have an option want to use SQL elastic pool. So I am not going to use an elastic pool for now. I'm going to use a creation of shingle database here. So if you want to use an elastic pool, you can click yes and you have to create a new pool from here. So I'm going to use a single database and workload environment. I'll choose development. If you see the cost of this particular DB, which we are going to create, it's going to monthly cost 430, 28 rupees per month. It will cost. So if you see here, compute and storage. So here we can, from here, basically we can change the configuration. So if I'll go to go conf configuration. So here we have service tiers. So we have two models, B core and DTU. Here un under B core, we have three options, three service tiers, general purpose, hyper scale and business critical and same for DTU. So I'm going for the DTU base, which is uh, like dem for demo purpose, I'm going to use basic one. So if you see this cost is 439 rupees and the size 2 GB. So I'll click on apply. Now backup storage redundancy, I'll use going to use local redundant backup storage. Next networking. So connectivity method. So I will enable public endpoint and we have to set here firewall rules. So first we have allow Azure servers and resources to access the servers. So I don't have any resources in Azure, which is going to use this particular DB. So I'm not, I'm not enabling this as of now. And another we have add current client IP address. So this is basically your local workstation IP address will be automatically added here. So I'll uh, enable it, yes. So if I check my IP address current, IP config slash all. So we will see our local IP address when we uh, when the creation of DB will be completed. Now we have connection policies. So I'm going to use default one. Encryption, I'll also leave it TLS 1.2. Next come to security. So if you have to enable Microsoft Defender, again it will cost you. So I'm going to use I'm not going to use it and these also I'll leave it default because I don't have any identities managed identities now if you have any existing backup you can restore it from here 
if you do so i'm going to create a sample database basically here if you see here if i cancel it here we have option to change the collision label backup also we have option like when we uh, choose the backup of dv uh, then it will automatically take the collision like whatever the collision use to create the particular dv if so for now i'm going to use a sample database so i'll click on okay so the sample database is using this particular collision label now i will hit review and create so it will cost you from here like it's going to toss cost 439 rupees per month so i'm going to hit create so it is going to create two resources for us for the first one is sql server and the next sql database so once it will first it will create a sql server then on on that sql server it will create a sql db so we will wait until this process is going on so we'll wait a couple of minutes so now deployment is completed we'll go to resources and if i go to set server firewall from here basically we can see the ip address so this is the my public ip address of my local machine so it's added this uh, ip address so as of now i can access this database from my local machine itself if you want to add uh, more clients you have to add their ip address over here so basically you have to add uh, multiple uh, firewall rules or you can use if you have any particular bnet you can also uh, add that particular bnet also so now i'm going to do uh, i'll copy this okay server name let me server okay this is the one so i'll connect from my local machine so i'll disconnect my local system i'll use sql server authentication and i'll put here detail demo So you can see its database is connected now so we have created a sample database which is name we have put demo db so if i'll go to tables so these are the tables as part of this particular database so that's how basically uh, we create a Uh, azure sql databases so if if i see the sql server also so you can see this is sql server and this is sql database so two resources basically it has created as part of uh, azure sql database creation process so that's all for today see you next video thank you so much